This is actually really great. So normally when I'm talking in DC, uh, everyone I have a room full of suits, and I'm like the guy with the hoodie and the, the jeans on. So this is awesome to actually turn the tables for once. Um, so I understand that I'm the only thing in between us and going to happy hour. Is that correct, or ish? Um, so is the mic not working? Is this guy not working? Maybe I'll talk into this mic. That works too. Um, so I have never been accused of speaking too slowly, uh, and so I will try to stay true to that to get us out of here. Uh, hoping to talk for about 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. Uh, leave some room for questions, or if you just want to jump straight to happy hour, uh, we, can, we can have the questions over there. Does that sound good? Sweet. Um, so my background, actually, I'd never made a map before in my life, absent like preschool drawings or something like that, uh, prior to about March or so. Um, and I got involved with GitHub. Uh, my job at GitHub is, is the government evangelist, the government liaison, to try to get the government more involved with the kind of things that we care about, open source, open data, uh, open government. And I saw an opportunity and really fell in love um, with the, the mapping community. Um, so first, a little bit of background about how we got here. When you look at the history of the internet, um, every time a challenge arises, there's kind of this David and Goliath story that really emerges. Uh, on the one hand, you have these very enterprisey, top-down uh, solutions, right? We, we are serious people. We do serious business. We need a serious solution. If it doesn't scale to a million records on day one, it's not a good solution. And that's kind of one, one camp that always emerges, regardless of what the format is, regardless of what the challenge is. Uh, on the other side of the coin, the, the other side of the equation uh, is more of the hackery camp, the, 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 the people that just want to kind of get it done. Um, these guys try to find a lean solution. They, they try to prototype something out. They pull a piece of the fabric of the internet that already exists and, and kind of re-opt it in order into, into their challenge or whatever they need. Um, and so we see this, for example, when the internet first came out, um, we didn't all use HTTP. There was a big distinction between the web and the internet. Um, if I wanted to put out a new service, a new protocol, a new website, whatever it might be, um, I would choose a random port, one, two, three, four, five, lucky number seven, whatever it might be, and would expose services on different ports. And then people said, whoa, guys, 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 this is crazy. We got TCP IP, that's kind of the, you know, the way the internet talks to each other. Let's just pipe everything through that, and any technology you need, build on top of that. Really stupid um, uh, syntax, really stupid pattern, really stupid standard, really complex stuff that you can build on top of that. Um, we've seen this more recently with kind of the debate with XML and JSON. Everyone knows what XML and JSON are. Two different formats to express the same exact data. One's really, really explicit, and one's really, really lean. And so you kind of see that, generally speaking, the internet prefers JSON when it communicates between servers. Um, and the enterprise, data centers, really prefer XML because it has a little bit higher fidelity. Um, so we see this with SOAP and REST. SOAP is an authentication protocol. It's a really, really, really great envelope. In fact, it's probably the perfect envelope you can possibly imagine. But you spend so much time opening the envelope that it's time for bed by the time you actually get it open. You don't actually get the contents. Hackers said REST, right? OAuth, very, very simple stuff, right? And again, with more uh, other formats, Adobe PDF, Microsoft Word, going towards the internet, we have HTML, Markdown, and of course, in the geospace, things like Esri, KML, um, GeoJSON, and TopoJSON. So what's kind of the lesson to take away there? Um, the first thing that I point out is that the internet is inherently a different animal than the desktop, right? On the desktop, we have things like Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word cares about margins. It cares about page breaks. It cares about things that you use when you're making paper. Right? But the internet doesn't have margins, and the internet doesn't have page breaks. So the kind of paradigm of things you care about, you can't just take a Microsoft Word document, PDF it, and put it up on the internet. That's a bad experience. Right? You want to start with an internet-centric format if you're building things for the internet. We learned that open solutions are better than closed solutions. You don't want the entire technology locked into a, a particular individual, um, a particular proprietary format. Um, and all that you, have a, that you want a simple solution. Right? You want something that you can just open up in your text editor that there's not this really big barrier to entry. And so the takeaway from that is that the internet prefers really dumb formats and really smart tools. Because it's a lot easier to upgrade a tool, right? You can upgrade to the next version of your internet browser. You can upgrade to the next version of WordPress or Drupal. But the, the language that the internet speaks, TCP, PIP, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, really, really dumb solutions that can be applied to any sort of context. And we just innovate on the edge as much as possible so we can experiment, try things, figure out what works, figure out what doesn't work. Um, and so how did GitHub get involved with GeoJSON? Everyone, I don't know if you're familiar with, we talked a lot about um, using GitHub for storing geospatial data. Um, up, starting in June or so of this year, we actually started rendering geospatial data as well. 
Um, and we chose GeoJSON as the only format that we support. Well, GeoJSON and, and top of JSON. Um, the reason we chose GeoJSON is there's no API to learn. There's no SDK to install. We didn't have to pay a licensing fee to a third party. We just took what we knew. We knew how to build websites. We knew how to use JSON. We knew, knew how to use JavaScript libraries. We do that with jQuery. We do that with CSS. We do that with, with all sorts of other different things. It's just we're putting something else in the box this time. It's the way the internet works. Um, so before we go any a little further, that's kind of the nice, what I tell my parents, the reason that GeoJSON support came about in GitHub. Um, the real reason was a good buddy of mine who's also very into open data and I, uh, 4.30, 5 o'clock at the end of the workday, said, hey, you want to go grab a drink and just kind of you know, talk, catch up? We haven't seen each other. Great. Sounds good. We couldn't figure out a place where to meet. We all had our favorite bars. We were in different parts of town. He and I had just moved. So like any good open data geek, of course, the first place we go is data.dc.gov and get the data set that has the liquor licenses for all of Washington, DC. Makes total sense, right? Uh, and so we got this data set, and I, I went up to data.dc.gov, and it came out as a sheet file. And I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hacker. I'm a geek. I'm a programmer. I know how to deal with data. Great. Let me just open this up in my favorite text editor. And this is what I got, right? A bunch of zeros and ones. I, I, oh, that's actually really funny. I think we our hands just changed. Never mind. It's, um, you use Flux, really, really awesome app. So I just, my contrast changed and confused me. Uh, so I got a bunch of zeros and ones. And I'm like, what the heck do I do with this? And I'm like, wait a minute. I also can download the data in a KML file. I've heard of KML before. Open format, XML based. I granted it's XML. I'll take it. It'll do. Uh, and so I open up the KML file. And I'm like, oh, great, sweet. I can actually read this in a text editor. Uh, I can see, like, oh, oh, it actually just links out to a KMZ file. I have no idea what a KMZ file is. Let's go down the rabbit hole. And so we've moved past zeros and ones at this point, but now we're on to like A, Bs, and Cs. Right? At no point can I just go in and touch the data. I need a expensive proprietary software, licensing. I need a background in GIS. None of these things that I had. It's 5 o'clock. I just want to get a beer with my buddy. So after a little bit of, of playing around, I actually was able to convert it into GeoJSON. I opened this up in my, in my favorite. Everyone knows what a text editor is, an IDE, something like uh, Sublime, maybe. Uh, just, all it is, you can do this in, in WordPad, whatever, whatever comes with your computer. Uh, open it up, and all of a sudden, this is plain text. You don't need to be a developer to see that it, it, it is the, uh, what's this, Stetson's, right? Stetson's bar, this is where we have our GeoDC meetups. Um, Stetson's bar on U Street. And if there's a mistake here, I can change the address to 1611 or whatever it might be. I don't need any sophisticated software. It's just text. It's right there. Um, it's plain and simple. So let's say I want to map that. And so the problem was I had all the software, I had all this data. I had no way of mapping it. We ended up just Googling it. It was, it was not a good experience. I, I almost was sober that night. I, I don't want to talk about it. It's scarring. <laughs> um, and so I said, no one else should suffer this fate. I want to make this better for everyone else. So we, we, we went out, um, partnered with Mapbox, or not, we really just went to mapbox.com and downloaded the JavaScript library. There wasn't really much partnering going on. Uh, downloaded the JavaScript library, threw it up on github.com. Um, and so now the process is, if you want to map a GeoJSON file, whether you got, get it from data.gov, data.tc.gov, you make it yourself, all you do is you commit it to GitHub. That's as easy as either copying and pasting, dragging and dropping. Uh, if you're familiar with Dropbox, we have native clients that provide a very Dropbox-like experience where you just like, drag it into a folder and hit sync. So very, very low barrier to entry. You commit it. I don't know what happens after that. It's done, right? It's mapped. There's one step in the entire process. Um, so this is the result. Um, this, for example, is a location of bars in DC. You're starting to see a theme here, right? Um, this is a map of bars in DC that also have Wi-Fi. Um, and this is just a GeoJSON file committed to GitHub. Um, and you can see it's actually fully interactive. I can zoom in. I think this might actually be Stetson's. Oh, no. This is Soho Cafe over here. I got Identify. Um, and this, this is just running. This is actually a web browser right now. Uh, and it's, oh, I didn't, I didn't want to be outdone by the, by the other people today. This is running on GitHub, of course. Um, it's open source. There's Markdown. You saw some emoji in there. Um, so this, no, this is just actually embedded, running off of GitHub right now. It's live. Um, it, it just works, right? You just commit the file. Uh, so the, the license map, right? So this big KML, JSON, crazy file, um, threw it up onto GitHub. And all of a sudden, uh, here, here we can see that same exact record. I don't need a degree in GIS. I don't need a degree in computer science. Um, I can see that that is my map right then and there. there that is U Street. Same exact record. So this is, this is the graphical representation that we just saw a second before by just dragging and dropping, downloading the file, committing. Uh, question then comes up, will this scale? Great, Ben. It works for bars in DC. Like, how, how many things can you throw at this? I'm a very super serious enterprise person. And I have millions of rows. How do you scale that, right? So here is, I think, every fire hydrant. No, this is actually where we're still on liquor license. Again, staying with the theme. Um, this is every bar in DC. And as you can see, we're clustering it on the fly. All this is happening client side. Um, your browser actually just loads the Mapbox library. 
loads the GeoJSON file, marries the two of them together with a style sheet. Um, so this is all happening dynamically. Theoretically, you can manip manipulate this as much as you want. And I think this particular data set has a couple thousand records in it, uh, 1,785 records in it, right? Um, so that's, it scales pretty well. Um, embeds, right? Some people say, I don't know why that's going so slowly. Good internet. Oh, man. Of course. Every time you do a demo. Uh, so embeds, right? So this is an example. You can see the embed code right at the top there. Uh, one single line. All these that you've been seeing here have been embedding, running directly off of github.com. So you don't, we don't own your data. Um, you can take your data elsewhere, either, either pulling into something else or the rendered map if you want it, if you want it elsewhere. Um, so like I said, GeoJSON, top of JSON, JSON files, pile, uh, points, polygons, anything you can name. Uh, we do automatic clustering over a certain point. Uh, you can change the markers. Like you saw some of my maps there have like little martini glasses for the bars or whatever. They identify pop-ups. Um, crazy simple embeds. And a new feature we rolled out relatively in, in, recently that I'm really excited about is GISTs. Um, so are you familiar with, with what GIST is? Um, GIST is a very lightweight, just kind of notepad service where you can drag and drop or copy and paste a file. Uh, you can do it anonymously. You can do it publicly, whatever you want. And so there's not this whole big collateral of a repository. It's just kind of, here's my file, boom. Um, and I think this might be one of the first examples of being able to make anonymous maps. I don't know if anyone's done anything really cool with that yet, but that's something that's there. Um, but wait, there's more. Um, so the, you're kind of asking, OK, Ben, I get it. You're, you're, the, you're the government guy. You're cool about maps. You wanted some place to drink. But like, why is GitHub getting involved with all of this stuff? Um, and the idea here is that we want to kind of encourage specifically government, but, but open data professionals, to begin to treat data with the same respect that geeks treat their code. Right? So if you're a software developer, uh, you have a version control system. You know that if so much as a single semicolon is off, your entire program will come crashing to a fault. Right? So especially when you're collaborating with other people, you need to know exactly who made what change when, what changes were either proposed, accepted, or rejected, at an extremely, extremely granular level down to the individual character. You can't just you know, you could be like, oh, hey, I made some changes. Here you go. Accept these. Right? Because if one character's off, entire thing comes crashing to a halt. Um, so we started out, I'd say about 20 years or so ago, very similar to where um, open data is today, emailing things around, zip files, kind of very custom-built servers. Uh, and then we realized that there's a, a better way to do that. And that's kind of what the GitHub model is. It takes a, a collaborative approach to build communities around shared problems. Right? So all of a sudden, not only is it that here's my file, but if you see something wrong with my file, here's the running list of known issues. Please feel free to submit a pull request to, to make this data better. Right? So it's open. It's more collaborative. You're taking the idea of open source and just applying it to data. Um, so just a quick example to, to close things out. So I made up that map we showed earlier of all the places that had Wi-Fi in DC that were bars. Um, I didn't know all of them. Right? So I put the map online. A coworker of mine, within like 20 minutes of me posting it, said, hey, I love Chinatown Coffee Company. You should add Chinatown Coffee Company to that list. Right? I'd never been there before. I said, good call. Threw some emoji in there. Uh, Merge it right in. Right? So when's the last time that you were able to diff a map before? Right? Somebody proposed a change, or you made a change, and you're like, this is exactly the change that happened in the last 24 hours. Right? We can see here, um, I'm adding Chinatown Coffee Company. It's a, it's a feature. It's a point. It's marker symbol, symbol bar. Very, very granular. So that allows you to then discuss things at an extremely, extremely technical level. Um, you actually now have a change log of your map. You can see who made what change when over time. But this is extremely useful in the regulatory complex when like, licenses, licenses are being put out and mapped. You can go backwards and forward in time. You can diff things over a certain subset of time. Um, start getting what's the velocity of your data? Who's making changes to your data? When are those changes being made? Right? Really, really starting to put a, a professionalism around kind of what used to be just open hackers, open source hackers just building cool things on the weekend, which is really, really cool. But we need to sell that to the suits in the room. We need to sell that to the enterprise folks. Um, so under the hood, I sold you it's Mapbox, which is just using leaflet.js. Everything's client side. Um, open street map tiles, so that, that the entire stack, for the most part, uh, with the exception of about 100 lines of glue, is about exactly what it took to go from here's a GitHub repo to here's a map. Right? So very, very lightweight solutions, um, almost entirely open source. So I'm a big fan of graphs. And that's also my favorite emoji. A chart with upward facing, upward, up, tr upward right trend, I think, is the exact emoji name. Right? Everyone knows an emoji is here, right? I'm not going crazy? All right, sweet. <laughs> Um, and so this is the past month trailing or so, uh, rendering different GeoJSON formats at GitHub. So you can see, obviously, GeoJSON is a front runner. Um, we don't actually require the .geoJSON extension. JSON files work as well. So there's about 20,000 or so of those rendered in the past month. Uh, and then top of JSON, which is specifically with that extension, um, you can see down at the bottom there, it looks a couple thousand or so. 
Um, so we talked about why GitHub liberating data, right? So get that data locked up on data.dc.gov where I need expensive software uh, to the place where anyone can use it, anyone can do anything, democratizing mapping. I talked about treating data as code. I won't recover that. Um, so some cool examples, and then, and then I'll get everyone to the bar and well, we can do questions and answers there. Um, Philadelphia flu shots. Um, so, so Mark, which if this will actually load, hopefully. Yeah! Okay. Um, so Mark made an open standard for, and this, is, this I think is really cool and exactly what people should be doing, um, made an open standard for where to find a flu shot in the city of Philadelphia and said, hey, any city that needs to talk about flu shots, here's the open standard. Um, committed as a GeoJSON to GitHub, GeoJSON file to GitHub, and you can go see um, where, where to make a flu shot. Um, this is another one of my favorite examples, forest fighters. So the National Park Service actually has, um, as you can see, these are running off of GitHub, um, actually has some sort of a script that they track the boundaries of forest fires, and as the boundary of the forest fire changes, that script commits an updated GeoJSON file to GitHub. So as of today, you can actually diff a forest fire on GitHub, which I think is the coolest thing um, that just blows my mind. Um, GeoJSON.io, I don't want to go too far into that. If you haven't already seen it, you should definitely check it out. Uh, if you're familiar with pros.io, it makes a very nice graphic user interface on top of GitHub, on top of the map features. Um, so here, for example, is that same map that I call of the DC Wi-Fi bars. Um, it provides me with a metadata editor. Um, so again, trying to democratize mapping so I don't need this really big background formal training experience in GIS. I can go through, if I want to add a box, boom, there's my box, and I can save it right directly back to GitHub. So really, really cool. Try to make things easier. And of course, we're dogfooding it internally um, for our own blog posts. Um, so what's next? I challenge you, if you know of a data portal that has proprietary formats that is not inaccessible for your Aunt Susie to go and see a map of where to, you know, the nearest fire hydrant is, whatever it might be, grab that data, just throw it up on GitHub so we can get more people, get them access to their own city's data, their own civic data, so they can begin to use it. And we can begin to try to train government officials that it's not just about putting data out there, it's about building communities um, around shared challenges. So these slides are online as exactly they are if you want any of these links um, at, at benbalter.com slash make maps better together or the slides are open source if you saw a mistake um, you want to grab this and, and do your own thing with it it's on my GitHub account so like I said I have a bunch of Octocad stickers if you don't have your laptops not already stickered come find me here come find me at the bar um, I'm glad to, to continue geeking out about this and I think I got us out pretty darn close to on time so all, the, all that um, coffee this morning really paid out so thank you <laughs> <laughs>